played Ohio State for the national championship after we had done the same thing against Oklahoma and Texas. The boys came out and they would drop back. We couldn't press. The best uh, uh, defense in basketball is a press all over the court, man to man. But with tall men, you can't do that. So we would drop back and all of them hold their arms up like this. And the other team would holler zone. So instead of cutting and trying to break through it, they would stand on the perimeter and shoot long shots. When we got the ball, either after a goal or an interception or a rebound, we always tried the fast break, every time. When our coach called us to tell us that we'd been invited to go to the NCAA, we had never heard of the NCAA. We didn't want to go to the NCAA. The state basketball tournament of Ohio was the next week, and we wanted to go see the state tournament. The championship trophy was on top of the uh, the writer's table at midcourt. And at one point in the game, uh, uh, Bobby Annett, our captain, was going for a loose ball uh, near the edge of the court, dove for it, and went right over the top of the table, hit the trophy, clipped the, there was a, a small uh, a figure of a, a man, a basketball player, on top of the trophy, clipped it right off, broke the trophy, so that later, when, uh, after we'd won and they presented the trophy to us, they had to present it to us holding the figure of the man on top. You played a regional tournament and established the champion between, let us say, the Midwest and the West. Then that team played in the final game of the NC2A. In 1940, that was the second year of the NC2A. And the finalists happened to be Indiana University and the University of Kansas. So that was the only game. 1941, my junior year, we won the conference, the Rocky Mountain Conference. And it was a very simple form in those days. The four teams played in the West, met in Kansas City, and four teams had a playoff in the East. And then the winner of the East and the, met the winner of the West for the national championship. Over 7,200 fans here tonight in Kansas City where Eastern champion Wisconsin meets the kings of the West, the Washington State Cougars. Here's a pass into Gene England. He scores. Badger coach Bud Foster receives the championship award. Stanford in the forecourt against Dartmouth's man-to-man -man defense. Howie Delmar with the ball, top of the key. He scores. The Indians with a big lead. Working with the ball is Delmar. Way out there. That's right. And we had George Mikan in there, and they had a young fellow that played against him. And I remember so vividly now because the day after the tournament, we took a walk. We asked George where he went the day of the game. He, some, he walked about eight, nine miles sightseeing in New York, and he, he walked us right out of the tournament. We thought we'd had a good year. Uh, didn't play well in what we thought was our final game, and we were sitting around being disappointed when the phone call came that Arkansas, on their way to the tournament in Kansas City, had been in a car wreck. And as I remember, one of their players was killed, and several were injured, and they asked us if we would take their place. Utah leads by two with 10 seconds to play. Here's a bad pass, picked off by Murphy, over to McGuire, a long one, he hits! It's overtime! This young Utah team already played in the NIT, Dartmouth in the championship game for the second year. Arnie Farron at the line, score tied. Arnie again. Score tied, just seconds left in overtime. Jump ball controlled by the Utes. Over it goes to Arnie, back to Herb Wilkinson, long one, he got it! The people in the 40s, the Mikans, uh, myself, uh, and others, presented the information or the knowledge that if you took a big kid early in his life and started the training, that he could play basketball. And that particular time, I think we had as uh, much interest as we have right now in basketball. We had that same interest in the East, especially in the Garden, especially in New York City. Now, most of our games were played in Kansas City in that tournament. From Kansas City, then we come into North. North New York to play. Aggies working that delivered offense. Williams to Hankins. Over it goes to Parks. Now to Weldon Kern. Looking into the big guy in the middle. Into Curland. Oh, he's fouled. Curland. Aggies lead. Curland and Dolph Shays in the jump ball. Aggies control the tip. Moving it around the outside. Looking into Curland. There he gets it. He hooks. He misses. Goes after it. Sticks it back. Dolph Shays. 
New York University down by four. This may be their last chance. Shays with the ball. A bounce pass. Stolen by the Aggies. The mystery had gone out of it. We weren't we weren't little boys anymore. Uh, we were very deliberate in our actions uh, in the 45-46 season, and we had as our goal to repeat uh, and win the NCAA championship. Because it was the first team in the United States that ever played back-to-back -back and won the national, and we did in the 45 and 46. Here's sophomore George Captain of Holy Cross. The senior center of the Sooners, Gerald Tucker. Sooners working the ball, Landon behind the back pass to Tucker, he's fouled, what a pass. Score tied, Tucker with the charity. Jump ball, over to Captain, Holy Cross leads. Crusaders in control now, over to Offering, long one. Crusaders win, the East is back on top. Kentucky's had a great tradition almost as long as I can remember. Adolph Rupp came here in 1930 and began building that tradition. We had Alex Rose at center, and you don't have to apologize for him for a center. We had a kid by the name of Barker that just wanted to pass and build and do. He'd shoot once in a while when he felt like it. He was an excellent defensive man. And on the other side, we had Jones a boy from up here in the mountains that stood about 6'5", weighed about 210 pounds. He was a tremendous rebounder. I also had on there Ralph Beard. If you stopped him, you, you hurt us tremendously. Rollins at guard in the game against Holy Cross in Madison Square Garden, he guarded uh, Cousy. And he held Cousy's no field goals. Kentucky just about to wrap up its first ever NCAA tournament championship. And that's it! The Wildcats are the national champions! Folks are starting to call this team the Fabulous Five. There's Alex Groves with the MVP. Well, AP's brand new basketball poll had Kentucky number one this year, and the Wildcats certainly proved them right. Oklahoma A&M with the ball, but it's all over. Kentucky wins its second straight NCAA title. Well, it was two of the greatest, Adolph Rupp against Henry Iba, and the second straight most valuable player award for Alex Groza. The NIT in New York was a much bigger tournament, and uh, the schools, I know we did it in, uh, early, that you, we uh, had a choice of going to the NIT or the NCAA. We went to the NIT because it was more lucrative. It seemed to have more prestige. But then the NCAA just began building and building and building.
KNY passes it in against Bradley. There it goes to Al Roth. A layup. He scores. Braves play the ball in over to Gene Melchiori. Little guy drives from the left side. Misses a reverse. Picked up by Schlickman. Back to Melchiori. Scoop is up. Good. Nat Holman's Beavers on the threshold of their first NCAA tournament title. It's over. They've done it. CCNY wins the crown 71-68. The University of Kentucky had won an NCAA championship in 1948. The next year, they won another NCAA championship in 1949. And then, then I came to school, and we won it in 51. So three out of four years, Kentucky won the NCAA basketball championship. Kansas State and Kentucky battling for the rebound. Comes off. Spivey gets it. Fighting free. Turns, spins. Long pass down court to Hagen. Wide open layup. Frank Ramsey pounds down court. The little playmaker looking for an opening. Goes to the middle over to Watson for the jumper. A little bit of bluegrass heaven to be a Kentucky basketball fan these days. Three national titles for the Wildcats and for Adolph Ruff. They just love to play basketball. Uh, Bill Hoagland, Lynn Hart, Kenny, those guys. And we, we got the, we, we did everything together. Uh, we went every place together. Uh, it was a, like a big family. And Fogg was the head of the family. Come on, boys. This is it. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Clyde LaBella. St. John's having a tough time with Kansas tonight. Peterson over to Ronnie McGilbray. Little guy around the key, breaks to the baseline, goes under, spins for two. Jayhawks running the play. Lenhard with the ball over to Hoagland to the top of the key into Lavella. There's that hook. Mark it up. The Jayhawks are on their way to the national title. Dean Kelly fires and misses. Clyde has the rebound. It's short. Goes again. Two. We did win uh, rather easily. I remember I got to play the last 29 seconds. All right, boys. This is going to be the toughest season a University of Kansas team has ever faced. I know it. I've been here a long time. I've seen them come and go. And I just tell you, you're carrying a terrific one on account of last year's great NCAA champion. Al Kelly at the free throw line. Fog Allen of the Jayhawks and Branch McCracken of Indiana coached against each other in the 1940 NCAA title game. Bobby Leonard up court for Indiana. Gets it into Don Schlon on the post. The big guy scoops, and it's two. Free throws in there. Hoosiers lead by three. Less than two minutes to play in the ball game. Leonard over to Charlie Crock. Crock looking him over. Goes to the top of the circle. Cuts up the middle. There's a collision. Uh-oh, he throws the ball. That's a technical. Okay, you can make up ground at the free throw line. Patterson misses. Patterson could cut it to two. He does. Al Kelly shoots the technical. Down by two, Kansas plays the ball in. Off to Jerry Alberts on the split post. To Dean Kelly, a running layup. The score is tied, Indiana with the basketball. Bob Leonard trying to work inside. Goes to the paint, he drives, he's fouled. All on the line right here, Leonard misses. Again, IU on top. Only seconds left, last chance for Kansas. Over to Jerry Alberts, long one, no good. Basketball changed right here with 1953. That basketball all of a sudden had two attacking forces. Naturally, the offense has always attacked the defense to score points. But now we had an attacking defense that said, hey, wait a minute, offense. The 53-54 season, we had won the Mid-Atlantic Conference, uh, and we were uh, told that we had to represent the conference in the NCAA playoffs, so we went to uh, the NCAA playoffs, and we were fortunate because Bob Pettit got knocked out. We happened to beat Fordham uh, in the last uh, six seconds, and uh, Kentucky had three ineligible players, and we had lost to Kentucky by 13 points down at their uh, home court, and uh, we were just lucky. LaSalle bringing the ball up court. They all like to touch it. They really pass it around. Over it goes to O'Hara, to O'Malley, to Blatcher. A long shot misses. Gola! Bradley under real pressure trying to move the ball in the forecourt against LaSalle. There's a pass deflected by Gola. Stolen by the Explorers. Long down court pass to Singley. Feed to O'Hara. LaSalle closing in on the NCAA championship. Still handling that ball beautifully. Off to Singley. Singley on the side. Long jumper. No good. Gola rebound. We were a ragtag team called uh, uh, the San Francisco Dons. Uh, and uh, a skinny guy in the middle who couldn't shoot but he had this long arm that come out of nowhere to block a shot. Bill Russell was probably the 
biggest player in college at the time. You know, you hear stories that he was like 6'7", 6'8". He was a, a good 6'9", or 6'10", when we played against him. And in the pros, when Bill Russell played, he was darn close to seven feet because he hunched over a little all the time. And, uh, but he was a dominating force uh, in the pivot. He could uh, offensively goal 10, which was allowed in those days. And he had quite an advantage over us. If he put Russell on Tom Gola, who was, who was the LaSalle center, then uh, uh, Tom Gola would be outside, he'd be a guard, he'd be a forward, he'd be driving, and that would take Russell away, away from the basket. Uh, so the idea was to put me on Tom Gola, and uh, even though he'd take me down low, Russell would be in the area. Perry to Buchanan, to KC Jones, long two. LaSalle trying to fight back, Gola up the middle, he got it! KC Jones up floor for the Dons, who've come out of nowhere. Beautiful ball handling. Off to Jerry Mullen. 15-footer. No good. Bill Russell. An amazing year. National champ. San Francisco. We almost went two years without a without a, uh, a loss. You know, we lost that one game in UCLA that got it started. But uh, the beauty of the thing was that we played with ease on that level. No pressure. It just went out and played hard. Great down pressure on Carl Kane. Pass intercepted by Bolt. Over to Perry. Perry drives. Long jumper. Guided in. Russell. Ball in the corner to Bill Russell. He sweeps into the key. Hooks it high. He's got it. The Don's 55 straight. And then in 57, uh, I was rooming in Kansas City with Bob Spear, the head coach of the Air Force Academy. I was cheering for Kansas. Uh, very much. Uh, I had helped coach the seniors on that Kansas team when they were freshmen, and Coach Dick Harp was the coach. North Carolina inbounds the ball. Cunningham has the ball deep. Shot is up. Shot misses. Cunningham rebounds in the corner. Cunningham turn around. He misses. King up with the ball. Regulation time. It's over. Score tied in overtime. Cunningham moves across the top. Gives off to Joe Quigg. Quigg looking for Bob Young as Chamberlain comes out to guard Quigg. There's a pass to Young. Maurice King misses. There's Young. Dragon scoring. Time running out in overtime. Maurice King with the basketball. Gives off to Billings. Billings down the left side to Elston. Back out to Billings. Chamberlain in the middle. Chamberlain with the ball. Shoot. Score. Time. Cunningham with the basketball. He gives off to Kearns. Kearns goes around the screen. Heads toward the right-hand corner. Puts the shot up. Chamberlain rejects. Kearns drives. Kearns shoots. Scores. North Carolina leads by four. Pass goes to Elston into Lineski. Lineski looking for Chamberlain. Gets it into the big man. He turns, moves into the center, shoots, scores, and he's fouled. Chamberlain shot good, 52-51. King at the line, shot up, game tied. 42 seconds left, game tied. The ball comes into Gene Elston. Elston back off to Parker. Parker dribbles across the top. He's looking, gives it back off to Elston. He's in the corner. Elston starts to make a move, goes toward the baseline. He's fouled. Elston at the line, second shot in, good, KU by one. Six seconds in overtime, KU leading by one, quick with the basketball, drives for the basket, he's fouled. Tied, up by one. Lineski fires the ball in, tries to get it to Chamberlain, can't, the ball is deflected, goes off to Kearns, Kearns with the ball, it's all over. North Carolina wins a triple overtime. The 1958 team was really a big surprise. Coach Rupp had said early in the year that uh, he had a Carnegie Hall schedule and a bunch of barnyard fiddlers, and they became known as the Fiddlin' Five. Seattle's Elgin Baylor brings it down, moves off to the left side, out to the top of the circle to Francis Saunders, Saunders to Otorik, Otorik back to Saunders, he lets it fly from the outside, it rebounds off of there, Baylor taps it in. Kentucky's Vernon Hatton has it, fakes, drives for the basket, goes under, lays it in. Seattle's Charlie Brown feeds to Saunders, Saunders in the top of the key to Baylor, spins, fires, bingo! Kentucky's John Krigler brings it down, pitches the ball back to Johnny Cox, sets, fires a 20-footer, it's no good. It's tapped back to Cox, it goes into the right corner, it's in the air and good, and Kentucky pulls away. And after the tournament was over and Kentucky had won the NCAA title, Coach Rupp said uh, they still weren't violinists, but boy, they sure could fiddle. Yeah, it started with a radio announcer named Dick Baker. Uh, he, because Wilt had a name, Wilt of Stilton, Elgin was called the Rabbit. And he told me that um, <laughs> he nicknamed me the Big O. 
Bearcats, number one ranking in trouble. They're on the defense. The shot is no good. Robertson up for the rebound. Brings the ball down himself. Takes it across the center line. Since he needs a basket. Robertson to the free throw line. Underneath the open man. Robertson with the ball. Moving toward the basket. Squaring off for that jumper. Back to the basket. He goes up. He passes underneath. A layup. Robertson on the move. Down the right side. To the corner. Stop. Up for a jumper. True for two. Because sometimes the greatest teams never win. There is a lot of luck involved, and people don't understand that about sports. They think the best team always wins. It does not. West Virginia needs this basket. No good. Jerry West with the rebound. Yes. Game tied. Bob Smith looking for the basket. Underneath, Jerry West maneuvers clear and hits. Hemhoff way outside on the perimeter. Over to Dalton. Dalton shot true. It's over. California 71. West Virginia 70. I did not like to lose. Uh, it was painful for me to lose. And uh, maybe the one thing that I regret in my career that I did not understand that some, somebody had to win and somebody had to lose. The thing that we had to get over was some of the youth on our team. We had three players who started. It was the first year we'd ever played. And so there was certainly some adjustment to, in that particular area of our lives. But after we had played maybe 10, 12 games of the season, I think we all understood and knew that we were a special group of people, that we had unique talents, and that we may have an opportunity to do something very special. No dribbles of basketball. Feeds off to Havlicek. Havlicek holds high, now moves toward the middle, gives to Siegfried. Siegfried goes left with it, feeds off to Roberts. Roberts with a hook shot. It's good! Ohio State's ball. No off to Lucas. He one-hands the basketball, turns, shot is up. Both high. Siegfried gets the ball off to Noel. Noel down the middle, passes off. Lucas shot up. Good! He's fouled. Lucas free throw in there. California's ball, shot is up, it's no good. Ohio State has control of the game. Feed off to Noel, down to Havlicek, drives in, hands it up, and it's good. Kell brings the ball down court. Ohio State in command of this basketball game. There's a feed off, pass is stolen. Ohio State's basketball, give to Bobby Knight, in for the layup. He misses, tipped up, and North's good. It's all over. Ohio State wins by 20, 75, 55. Ohio State had... Uh... Uh, great, great athletes, and uh, Lucas Havlicek and Siegfried and Noel, uh, they were a super basketball team. They had confidence. They had won the national championship the year before. They had won 32 in a row, and, and, uh, 
And there were many observers and coaches included that felt that we shouldn't even we should not even show up for the ball game. I had no idea that we could we, that we belonged on the same floor with Ohio State. Uh, they they had just in my mind reached uh, gigantic proportions. They didn't belong in the college game, a super team, you know. But uh, they've got an old adage: if you're supposed to beat somebody, beat them early. And uh, we looked up, I guess, at the eight-minute mark of the first quarter, and. Um, we were, what, two or three points behind, and all of a sudden this little idea comes in your head, hey, maybe we could play with these guys after all. Heavily favored Ohio State. They cannot shake Cincinnati. Cincinnati staying right in this basketball game. The feet is out top of the lane. Goes off into the corner. Siegfried has the ball bounced off. Now the pass to Lucas. Lucas up with the shot. Perfect. Cincinnati's Bobby Weisenhahn looks for the basket. Shoot. Bullseye. Feed out to Bolden. Bolden shoots. He scores. Cincinnati's come from behind, playing great ball. Feed is into Hogue. Hogue gives it back out to Yates. Long shot. Good. Since he in command, Bolden with the basketball moves to the left side. Shoots. Scores. The battle of the Ohio's is over. Cincinnati wins. We knew how to play. We had role players on our on our basketball team, and some could rebound, some could dribble, some were complete ball players. But if we could play our style of basketball, take the, take the good shot. And above all, I always told my team, always told the press or the various coaches that we have no All-Americans, but we have an All-American team. Well, I knew every team's plays by heart. I knew every play, every team was going to run. When they'd come down the floor and call out a play, I knew exactly what they were going to do. I could pass that information on to my teammates, and certainly it prepared us and made us a little better prepared defensively to do what we wanted to do. I think basically, uh, and I, I don't have any problem with it, Ohio State had the better athletes, the better basketball players. Uh, but again, I go back to uh, Ed Jucker. I think we had the better team. No doubt about it, this is the Ohio shootout. Yates finds Paul Hogue. Hook shot, two! Ron Bonham in the corner, goes right up. Yes! No. Off to Havlicek, into Lucas with the hook! Havlicek has the ball, down the right side, to Reed's back top of the lane, gets his shot up, hit. Another shot by Bonham, misses, rebound by Hogue, no good, another rebound, good! Two in a row for Cincinnati! Fifth year in a row for Cincinnati to the final four. Tackle with the ball to Yates, Yates shot is up, blocked out of there by Loyola. Harkness with the basketball across the midcourt line. Moved to the right side, shot is up, no good, tipped it. Seconds to go, shot is up, two-point lead, Cincinnati, down court quickly. Loyola, Harkness shoots, unbelievable! Tip to Loyola, Loyola with the ball, pass to Hunter, underneath, shot up, Harkness good. Cincinnati trying to tie, he goes off to Thacker, Wilson moves toward the middle, Wilson with a fine screen, underneath, good! Nail biting time, 56-56. Miller with the basketball, looks toward the net, shot is up, good. Long pass, Shingleton, tied in overtime. 12 seconds to go. Loyola moves the ball toward the basket. He is off to Harkness. Harkness at the baseline, shot, no, it's a pass to Hunter. Hunter's shot is up, hits, no good. Ross tipped it in. Loyola wins at the buzzer. And that was the victory for Loyola. And an unprecedented third national championship was lost. We never had a home floor, hardly at all. My first couple of years, we did play in the men's gymnasium here. But for 17 years, my first duty every day with the managers when I went to basketball practice would be to first sweep this gymnasium floor where we practiced and then mop it. We would pick this underdog against Duke. No one gave us a chance. They had one man, 6'10", another one, seven feet, uh, Jay Buckley and Hack Tyson, and no one, I mean, no one in Kansas City thought that the UCLA Bruins would win the game. And the score was 29 to 30 in favor of Duke. 30-29, one and one for Keith Erickson, 6.45 to go to the halftime. Erickson makes it good, tying it up, 30 yards. Erickson second, also good. 31-30, the Bruins back on top. Free throw missed, rebound McIntyre. The sophomore takes it, passes to Hazard. 
Hazard in front court. UCLA still by a point to the baseline. Here's Goodrich, jump shooting. Good. 33-30. That was the first uh, for that Duke man. Here's Hazard, short range, eight foot jump shot. No good. That's Hazard's good territory. Out it comes to Wall. Passes in the crowd underneath. Hirsch gets it up and in. The full court press is on. Ferguson checked the countdown from the Bruin fans, but here's a drive by Vassenack and Rimmel drive down the right hand side. He loses the ball on the floor. Good. Uh, Hirsch getting it away. Hirsch stealing it from him. Hazard coming up court now at 527. Hazard dribbling on the outside. Vassenack with him to Hirsch. Down to Kenny Washington driving over Mullins, banking it. It's locked goaltending. Tyson, Chris Mullins getting by Hirsch, breaking up the press, shoots from 20 feet. Off the rim, no good. Mullins on the rebound, stolen by Hirsch. The Hazard, two on two on the break, two on three, three on three. Washington, the trailer. Thanks, uh, Washington. No, he doesn't bank. And Duke hastily brings a man in. Long pass, here's two on one. Tyson drives in and misses. The follow is no good, and McIntosh gets it. Oh, brother. Duke is befuddled. Here's a jumper by Goodrich. Good. In a minute and 23 seconds, because of the 2-2-1 two, two, full court zone press, uh, the score was 45-30 in favor of the Bruins. And that was the ball game. I wanted a program to have, and to hold a, to hold a program a so sized just like this out isn't handy at all. So I got the habit of rolling up. But on this program, which uh, people uh, didn't notice, I would have many little facts, reminders to myself. Uh, for example, on one of the things that I would always have on there, which uh, coaches don't like to admit, but I would have the names of the poorest free throw shooters on the other team and the best ones. I would know who we'd want to play more aggressively, not foul intentionally because we would never do that. Michigan's basketball with UCLA in command. Leaping high, Kenny Washington, he brings the ball past midcourt. Great outside shooter, set, shot up, good. Cassie Russell. UCLA in command of this game. Give is to Washington. Washington into McIntosh, setting up the screen. McIntosh turns, he's being guarded very closely, gives to Goodrich underneath, shot up. Good, 42 points for Goodrich. When we hit the floor uh, and finally matched up at the center circle, uh, I saw a look in the eye of the opposition that I hadn't seen in the opposition all season long. And there was one of commitment. <laughs> they were playing for more. They were, they were playing for much more than just the crown. I think uh, back then, even though it wasn't discussed or written about very much, it was five basically who people considered were Southern whites playing against five inner city blacks. Pat Riley, great foul shooter at the line for the University of Kentucky Wildcats. Shot good, Texas Western will put the ball in play. Bobby Joe Hill, 5'10", the playmaker for this fine Texas Western team, the underdogs in this game. He'll set up to play underneath the lap, and he scores! Kentucky down court with the ball. High post, beat off to the right side. Dampierre shoots, good! Bobby Joe Hill, great playmaker, looks around to someone to feed to. Flournoy gets the ball underneath, easy layup. Kentucky with their hands full. Wildcats bring it down. Bobby Joe steals the ball. Here comes Hill. Hill in close. He scores. The crowd loving Bobby Joe Hill's great steal. Kentucky once again bringing the ball up to midcourt. Bobby Joe Hill on the guard. He steals again. Bobby Joe Hill a breakaway. Scores. Kentucky fighting to stay in the game. Crone gets the ball to Jaraz. Jaraz moves across the left side. Feed is off to Riley. Good. Texas Western in command. Bobby Joe Hill with the basketball. Feeds a high pass to Latin. Latin turns. Texas Western on the way to an upset here tonight. Pass off to the left side toward the baseline. Turn around. The give is back deep. Coming across the top. The feed off to Bobby Joe Hill. He drives toward the basket. Shot up good. Now that I uh, look back on it, and actually one of my players, Bob McAdoo, who played for me not too long ago, said that that game meant the difference between where he was going to go to school. He said it was okay then for uh, Southern blacks to go to North Carolina or to go to schools in the South, which at that time didn't have many black players. And it was almost a breakthrough, I think, for a lot of the, the kids. For me, the 60s meant um, the whole phenomena of black pride and black consciousness. Uh, I felt that very strongly. Now the two championships that we had won in 64 and 65, and the fact that Polly Pavilion was opening up in 66, I'm sure 
were the reasons, or among the reasons, that Louis Alcindor came to UCLA. Coach Wooden really was, if you, in a, in to, to phrase it most simply, he was like my kind of guy. He was very direct, he was very honest, he didn't pull any punches, uh, he had a sense of humor, but he was about discipline. And uh, I identified with all of those values. Uh, he put it in terms of he didn't ex expect us to do anything that he couldn't do. But, you know, he went, here he was, an A student and an all, a college All-American. I define success as peace of mind, which can be attained only through self-satisfaction in knowing that you made the effort to do the best of which you're capable. Lou Alcindor was a sophomore that season, and we had never seen anything like that before. Just warming up, we knew we were in serious trouble when we saw that giant walk out and saw what he could do and his reputation. And of course, the night before, he had played uh, Elvin Hayes in the big matchup of that, of that tournament, and it handled them pretty easily, too. Um, so we, we figured we had, we had done the, the best we could. Hooper giving to Don May on the right side. May looks, gives in the corner to Klaus, to Sadlier on the right side, and the pivot to Blender Terrain. He fakes, puts up his shot, blocked by Alcindor, and he pulls it out of the air. And here is Shackelford getting open with 15 feet, missed the shot, tapped it in the air, and good by the little guy, Warren. Here's May with it, tries a jump shot off the side, no good. And Don May has lost that magic touch tonight. He put on the greatest show of the tournament last night when he hit 11 shots in a row at one stage. Warren gets a step on Hooper, makes it, and Hooper fouls him. 64-42. UCLA battles back. Off on the right corner, goes to Shackelford, into Al Sender. Al Sender flips it outside to Warren. Off to Allen. Here's Shackelford, wide open with a 15-footer. Beauty. On the right side to Shackelford, back out to Warren. Warren gives back to Shackelford, into Al Sender. Al Sender turns with his jumper, hits it. Al Sender goes out, holding up a victory sign, shakes hands with Coach Johnny Wooden. We'd only lost to uh, Houston by two points in their home uh, with a lot of emotion on their side, and, and I had definitely a subpar performance because I was coming off of an eye injury. Um, we had everything to prove. Uh, we had been out of uh, the first place ranking. Uh, Houston had been given first place ranking, so we had everything to win, and they had a lot to lose, and uh, they weren't prepared to play. No question about it, UCLA is the best team. Ball is tipped out, goes to Warren. Warren behind the back, moves the ball to the left side, taking his time, gives to Shackleford, around one man on the baseline, shot up, bullseye. Vern Lewis dribbles down court for Houston, ball deflected, but Cheney picks it up. Cheney's on, pass is blocked, taken away by UCLA. Coming down court, Lucius Allen on the left-hand dribble. He's underneath, great feed, Lynn shot the... We won the regular season ACC, and they said, before you go to the NCAA, you must win the tournament. And that didn't seem fair to have to prove it all over again. And then we won the tournament. And I remember saying, I'm just, we're just thrilled to be in the NCAA tournament, and anything that happens is gravy. Alcindor gets the opening chip. Wooden going for his fourth championship here tonight. Ball in the middle of the court to Warren. Warren goes left and right. Now dribbles toward the baseline. Goes to the baseline, may shoot. Go instead, gives back. about it, UCLA's game. There's a stolen pass. Ball down court. Feed is off to Allen at the corner. It's good. This is truly a great basketball team. Uh, I've been reluctant to say so earlier in the year, but I believe at our best, we're the finest uh, basketball team that has ever played college basketball. In my senior year in 1969, uh, people just didn't think that we were going to lose, and we didn't. Boilermakers on the attack. Billy Keller setting things up. Purdue trailing out of George Farmer. Rick Mount on the pick. It's up. Good. Bruins with the lead. Heights with a dribble. Into Alcindor. Two more. Curtis Rowe over the timeline. On the dribble, moving in, spins around. Off the glass, good. It's been a frustrating game for Mount. His shot this time is up and good. Kenny Heights inside a row, almost stolen. Rowe recovers. Now to Alcindor, the fake. Good move off the glass and good. The 
Bruins trying to add to their lead. Alcindor back to the basket, gets the ball in the lane, the hook, good. The free throw, no good. Alcindor on the rebound, up good. And for UCLA, that's three straight titles. When you come on the basketball floor each day for practice, to me, you're a basketball player. In a sense, you're no longer a person or a student at UCLA. You are a basketball player. And I want to relate to you and your teammates as basketball players. And from this group, I want to try to develop the best basketball team we can have. And uh, you're a basketball player the entire practice. As soon as practice is over, the very instant practice is over, you're not a basketball player. You're a student. <laughs> I never mentioned winning. Now, it didn't mean that I didn't want to win and what's the common sense of what winning is. Yes, I wanted to, too. I wanted to outscore people, yes. But I felt that even that was accomplished better by having my players concentrate on making the most of what they have and then putting that to use with our group. The coach had me starting off uh, playing in front of artists and they would just lob the ball over my head and he would get easy layups and then I, you know, I called a timeout and went over to the coach and said, Coach, I can't play in front of him because I'm giving him too many easy baskets, and they can do that all night and we'll lose. So he said, well, play behind him. Now the Dolphins, Weeda King, over to Morgan. Big Gilmore inside for Jacksonville, takes the pass up the shot. Oh, it's blocked, and a great play by Wicks. Here comes UCLA back, Curtis Rowe. Only one man back for the Dolphins. Over to Vallely, into Patterson, the layup, good. Rowe, Patterson, now to Wicks. His shot is up. Jacksonville with the ball as the Bruins close in on a fourth straight national title. Inside, Artis Gilmore. And again, oh, Wicks blocks the shot. And then the coach said, starting tonight would be so-and-so. I started reading out the names, and he excluded Curtis' name and my name. And I said, I looked at Curtis and said, well, what's going on? And he said, oh, no, but we're going to find out, right? I said, yeah, okay. So then when everyone walked out, we went up to Coach Wood and said, what's wrong? He said, you guys were two minutes late to the pregame meal. We said, whoa, that's why we're not playing tonight? He said, that's why you're not going to start. I used to tell my players, for example, now don't expect me to treat you all alike. I will not treat you all alike. I'm going to try to give each one of you the treatment you earn and deserve. And I'll have to make the judgment on that, and I could be wrong. But I know that, in my opinion, the, the, the most, uh, well, the surest way to show partiality is to treat everybody alike. UCLA's Henry Bibby pulls up with a jump shot. It's there. 
UCLA in a full court press. Patterson intercepts, gives to Bibby. Bibby's jumper, good. Ford takes the ball, gives it over to Inglesby, who's going to throw it inbounds. Throws long, down court. He has Clarence Smith. He pulls up, six-footer, good. Patterson again, good. Inglesby works it down for Villanova. Gives in to Simeon Kowski. Puts it up in the air, got it. Schofield on the run, throws to Wicks. Loses the ball, put in by Bibby. A desperation heave is no good. The game's over. UCLA wins five in a row, seven out of eight. Good luck, Joe. Uh, uh, you like. We showed how much I Wait. thought of you when I was working hard to get you out of the zone. You knew what okay. it was. No problem. I understand very good. Congratulations. Coach Wooden, he has this great image and this great uh, uh, persona about him. Uh, but really, he's, uh, he's greater than his image. Florida State's Greg Samuels runs it down, pulls up in the corner to Ron King, lets it fly, got it. Wilkes passes into Walton, takes it back, goes in, scores. Greg Lee passes to Wilkes, turnaround jumper, got it. Coles drives, Walton picks him up, gives to Royals, got it. The UCLA press is on, there's a loose ball, Curtis has got it for UCLA, moves over, passes into Bibby, it's no good, Hollifield tips it in. UCLA wins, 81-76, another national title. Don't get carried away because you're doing well as a basketball player. That's a short period of your life. And even if you play professional basketball, when that's over, the vast majority of your life, the years of your life, are still going to be ahead of you. Oh, whoa, another great pass, Ernie DiGregorio. What a night for UCLA. Hollyfield into Walton. He turns up good. Tigers need a bucket. Over to Larry Finch. Inside Keenan and the jumper. Bruins looking for Walton inside again for two. Oh, what a game it's been for Bill Walton. Craig Lee inside. Oh, look at that pass and Walton. It's been the Bill Walton show here in St. Louis tonight, and there he is. UCLA has done it. They said it couldn't be done. They won seven in a row and nine out of ten. We became worried with the dominance of UCLA that uh, the people would lose interest in the NCAA tournament when one team is going to win it all the time. Well, the semifinal game against North Carolina State, when we had a good lead uh, a number of times, and we just couldn't hold on to that lead. And, uh, you know, we like to say that we beat ourselves. I'm sure the people in North Carolina say they whipped us. But uh, uh, that was a very, very tough, uh, tough loss for us, and one that I'll never forget or, or ever get over. Double overtime. What a game here. The Wolf Pack. It's David Thompson moving in. It's the end of a dynasty. Bull Rivers again to David Thompson. It's up. Good. To Maurice Lucas on the turnaround. In to David Thompson. At midcourt, Monty Town. North Carolina State setting up Spence to Tom Burleson. Oh, look at that domination. A battle. Thompson. Fighting and Spence grabs it. Goaltending, they're calling goaltending, and that'll count. Kyle McGuire's up, McGuire's on the court, and he gets a technical. There's the little man. Whatever success we've had, I have to give a lot of the credit to Coach Wooden because I learned uh, so much about basketball from him and, and about teaching and that's what coaching is. It's basically teaching. Eight seconds to go. The Bruins must score. Marcus Johnson, Richard Washington. Three seconds. He scores. The Bruins win it. That's John Wooden. This is the great coach's last game, trying for championship number 10. Here is Myers going up for a jump shot. It's there. Kentucky's Jimmy Dan Connor hands the ball to Kevin Greavy. Greavy moves to the top of the key, slides off to the left, puts up a left-hander that's there. UCLA's Pete Turgovich brings it down. Passes off to Richard Washington. Washington kicks it back out to Drollinger. Drollinger from the top of the key, lets it go. It's there. Turgovich brings it down for UCLA. Passes back out. Andre McCarter with the ball. Coach Johnny Wooden close to that 10th national championship. Here drives McCarter. It's good. And Coach Johnny Wooden completes 27 years of coaching, winning his 10th national championship. I mean, I'm just uh, just really proud to say that uh, I was a UCLA basketball player, that we won a championship. We won Coach Wooden's last championship, and that fact in itself 
is uh, something that I'm probably most proud of, that uh, we were all a part of that last championship together with Coach John Wooden, who's going to go down as the greatest basketball coach in collegiate basketball history. The person that had the greatest influence on my life was my late wife. That was my high school sweetheart and my wife for 53 years before I lost her, but my sweetheart for 60 years and uh, was the reason for my staying in school probably when things were difficult from a financial point of view and and the support that she gave me all through my years of teaching. Indiana had a great team. I did their championship game when two Big Ten teams played in Philadelphia, Michigan and uh, Indiana for the national title. That was Bobby Knight's undefeated team. We had played them twice that year. They had blew us out one time, and one time we had took them to the wire, and they had a great team. Coach Bob Knight signals for one of his players, Tom Abernathy, to come over as Knight tries to win his first national championship. Indiana on defense. Wynn Buckner makes a steal, heads for the other end all alone, lays it up and in. Indiana's Jim Wisman moving the ball in backcourt, passes off to Scott May, drives to the baseline, puts it up and in. Abernathy with the ball into Benson, turnaround jumper, good. Indiana wins, 86-68. The Hoosiers go 32-0. 77, we had gone to Atlanta in the Final Four, and I've never seen such media coverage. It's like the Super Bowl. And then in 72, we were in Los Angeles, and there wasn't hardly any interest. You only had maybe one or two press conferences. So somewhere, from my standpoint, between 72 and 77, the entire event, the Final Four, changed a great deal. Ten seconds left. Cornbread Maxwell, he'll take the shot. Oh! That's Maxwell. The inbound pass is not an easy one. There's the long pass. Smith, who came down. We had uh, fought hard and played, uh, played uh, just a lot of great basketball games that season. We practiced hard every day. I think that season we didn't have one bad practice, and that's very unusual for uh, a basketball team to go a whole season without, without having a, a bad practice. I think when you have a team that has a lot of seniors, people who have uh, had experience playing basketball, uh, and, and uh, when you know each other, it makes it a lot easier. The way he plays the game, he's solid, consistent, works hard. Oh, no. Gipped in by Gibbons. Gibbons everywhere. Oh. They'll shoot soon, though. Gibbons had it knocked away, controls it, and he's oh. it. Is he been sensational? Oh. Roby. Time for Kentucky to add to its lead. It's Gibbons again. He has 21 points to match his number in this first half. You hear him chanting in the background, goose, goose, goose. And he needs two on one. Oh, they didn't call it. A power dunk. And that's going to be it. The University of Kentucky are the basketball champions of the National League. Larry Bird was 16 for 19 against us. It wasn't that his scoring was so, was so bad or so great. It was what he passed off. I remember telling the players, you, know, you don't all, he attracts everybody to him. Don't everybody go to him, because if you leave your man, he's going to find the open man, which he did for the final basket also, the basket that beat us. Both teams sort of represent America in, in different ways. Uh, you had... Uh, the Cinderella of Indiana State, and uh, them being unbeaten, and everybody not thinking they have a chance, and then you have a super great player, Larry Bird, you know, carrying them. And then I think our team were 
We come from the Big Ten and got a lot of publicity. You know, a lot of people were surprised yesterday, Larry, when you mentioned that you played ball with Magic Johnson uh, in the World Invitational Tournament. Well, you know, me and Magic play together in that in that game, and you know, it's funny because Magic's such a great passer, but he wouldn't give me the ball. You know, I need the ball. <laughs> well, uh, I hope you don't think I'm gonna pass it to him tonight either. But uh, I thought I'd pass him the ball. Maybe he forgot it. Or <laughs> here's the great player bird. Great open. touches it, there are about three people in this area. Bird, Johnson, three on one. Here it comes. The alley oop to Greg Kelser. Long pass to Kelser. The corner bra. 12, 11. Oh, that read has hit three low. Oh, there's a pass. Look at John. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> In every sport, everyone wants to be number one. The whole world is watching. <laughs> the whole world is watching. publicity that I was getting coming out of high school and so forth, uh, I had a press conference announced that I was going to the University of Louisville. And at that time, uh, which was in 1976, uh, I made a commitment to the city on national TV that we would win a national championship. We had such a young team. We started one freshman and three sophomores, and Daryl Griffith was our only senior starter. And, and I think the funny part about that team was, was that they drew their strength from Daryl Griffith. Uh, they were very young, inexperienced. Nobody thought we had a chance to win it. I didn't even think we had a chance to win it. Two minutes left in a low-scoring first half. Griffith, good fake. Oh, my, what a play. Kiki came over and tried to intimidate him, but he just went up over Kiki. Foster all the way. He scores. There's a little one-on-one, -on -one, folks. Daryl Griffith. Oh, my God. Griffith. Not there in Vandaway. He's done a job in the second half on the board. Long pass to Sanders. Oh, great catch. Oh, the intensity in the faces of the athletes. Bob! And oh, yes! You want to catch that oh, one. I think it's a wise move by UCLA to try the zone a little bit. Because you figured Griffin was going to try to take Holton one on one. Excellent move, but he's going to shoot. And hit. Harold Griffin, the leading scorer in the game with 21 points. Griffith looking to tie. 
Get back. Oh, what a play by the sophomore Ames to tie the game. Now the man will shoot. Told you the man to shoot that time. Louisville unique all season long. They made the opposition play 94 feet. Constant pressure. And part of Louisville's success is they've worn down opponents. Forced mistakes. And there's another. Denny Crum at age 42 will be the coach of the national champions in 1980. Larry Brown fighting like that terrier down to that final second. And there's the most valuable player, Darrell Griffith. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could have your attention for just a moment. The National Collegiate Athletic Association wants you to know that the condition of President Reagan is reported as good. He is out of surgery, and the prognosis for a complete recovery is excellent. 25-24. North Carolina's passing lanes are getting farther and farther apart. Time for one to be picked off. They're not careful. I think Carolina... There it is, a turnover. We had four returning starters, and then we had a freshman the name of Michael Jordan come in for Al Wood. Now, uh, Michael, as great as he was uh, as a freshman, wasn't as good as Al Wood it was as a senior. But yet those other players improved so much, they were determined to come back and win the national after finishing second the year before. This is a great one. 56 all. Michael Jordan has led both teams in rebounding tonight, and he got in again on another offensive rebound. 57-56, Carolina. We're seeing a little four corners look right here. Worthy out to Jordan. This is a half of a four corners. 5.41 to go, North Carolina sitting on it. Ewing's got to be careful, he has three fouls. Playing Perkins, Black, almost lost it. And he's fouled by Ewing, and that's four. Now Patrick Ewing has to be careful, and John Thompson calling a great time out here. Out to Gene Smith, they don't want him shooting. He's not that good a shooter from outside. Ewing's going to try it. He oh, and it's a one-point ball game with two and a half minutes to go. Close. And now Georgetown can take the lead. I think he's sleepy before he's going to go for the jumper. Is he ever faked beautifully once, twice, gets a roll. They are not going to come out and chase. And North Carolina now cannot go to the four corners. With that odd point, we're going for a game winning or a losing shot. And Dean Smith asks and gets timeout. That was the 15th lead change we've had in this ball game. We took the timeout and uh, with 30 seconds to play, and we were running what we call our two offense, and that is to go into James, but I thought he would be covered, and I said, Jimmy, look cross court to Michael, and as they got up, I said, Michael, you'll knock it in, and he smiled. They couldn't get the ball inside to myself or Sam. Michael had an open jumper. He took the shot uh, with about seven seconds left to go, which would have allowed us to at least get an offensive rebound, but you could just tell once he went up, he was confident, his tongue was out. Usually when that tongue was out, it's good. About that time, he, he saw me over in the corner, and. Uh, he threw it to me, and without hesitation, uh, I just took the shot. I felt I was open. Uh, I felt confident, and uh, I felt within uh, range. Gordy to Black. The tie, 18. Shot, Jordan. Michael Jordan, 14 seconds. Brown. Look for, look for Sleepy Floyd. Look. Oh, he threw it to the wrong man. He threw it to Worthy. It's over. It's over. He's fouled by Eric Smith. Fred Brown, somehow or another, threw the ball into the hands of James Worthy. Look at Dean Smith. Totally in control. Everybody going crazy. Carolina has won the 1982 NCAA championship. We 
wanted to do it for Coach Smith. Uh, a great coach deserves a, a NCAA championship. In 1983, in the Final Four, the, uh, the Louisville-Houston game involved the Phi Slamma Jammas versus the Louisville team that had a bunch of big running and jumping players, too. They dunked so many balls in that game, the official underneath the basket felt like he was in a blitzkrieg in London because the missiles kept coming through that basket one after the other after the other. And they went back and forth at one stretch of that game for three or four minutes and had nothing but dunks. I mean, monstrous dunks. And we were just running on the baseline, getting out of the way like it was a bomb coming after us. Survive in advance. Survive in advance. After we won, if you'd call us in the locker room, come and say, oh, by the way, you have to play two more games. Kids, fine, let's go. You know, we just kept playing until there was no one else to play. North Carolina State, they feel they're a team of destiny. They've come from behind so many times. They've been called the cardiac kids. They won five, come from behind games in a row to get to the final 16. They got to do it again. They better be careful here. Nobody guarding the inbounds passer. Queen Queen. wisely comes back. In the second half, North Carolina State shooting 26%, Houston 50 Far to Sidney Lowe, but he hits it anyway. Houston now 10 of 16 from the free throw line, and Lowe is hot. He's got the hot hand. They may have to go to him. Eight points. 52-48. You have Wittenberg wide open in the corner. Oh, and it's a two-point game. Here's Akeem again. Tipped out. That was McQueen who got a hand on it. Here comes Lowe. Lowe. Wittenberg to Wittenberg. He can tie it up. Got to drive to the basket. It's down to seven seconds. You can see the time. Wittenberg. Oh, that's a long way. He's oh. right there. They won it. On the dunk. This is the thing for which the players, the coaches, the fans, you know, this is what you gear your season towards. This is what you work for. That's the excitement. You know, that's the artist's best picture. You know, that's the writer's best story. That's the coach's best game. That, that's what you want in the NCAA tournament. We were a lot like a family. Um, we all stuck together. Um, it was uh, us against the world. <laughs> Um, that's the way you have to, to be uh, to be to be a, a great a good team. Everybody has to uh, be together, and I think that we were, and that's the reason why we were so good. This is one statistic that uh, Patrick Ewing has a considerable margin over Akeem Olajuwon, and that's on the free throw line. He's shooting 165. On the other hand, uh, Akeem is shooting 53 percent. In the lane a little early. So Georgetown, after trailing by eight, has tied it up. Here's Wingate at the other end. He and Elijah Wan are amazing how they can get up down the court. Reggie Williams, Ewing to follow. Anders is number 33 in red. Ewing. Some shot. No question about the accuracy on that one. Best leaper vertically on the team. Winslow out to Franklin. Team. Houston stepping that zone out. Doesn't even look anything like what Virginia says. Winslow with a block. Guy Lewis can't believe it. Tough to chase when you spread the court out this way. Here comes all the way over to Jackson. Huh. Look at the guy that's happy. It's John Thompson. And the man that he's hugging. Freddie Brown, remember what two years difference makes. The pass is long forgotten right now by Fred Brown. You know what's interesting with that picture? He was hugging him when he made the big mistake, too. Georgetown. That's the ball game. The national champion. I think the Big East Conference is one of the best conferences in America because you never know how a game is going to come out. And when, when the season is over, you say, it's over with. Now we can get in the NCAA tournament. I don't have to see these guys anymore. And then here we come marching to the Final Four. As soon as we get to the Final Four, here three Big East teams. There. And I said, oh, my God. It's something that, that the players will always remember. And people may forget, you know, well, who won it in 85, who won it in 86. But the individuals will never forget the feeling of stepping on that court. Hey, we're here.
There's a lot of hoopla going around. Uh, you know, there are all kinds of uh, scouts and, and people in from all over the country. The, the media from all over the country that, that is there. It's really exciting. And then you have uh, college basketball fans who are probably the craziest fans in the country. You've got guys with their faces painted and basketballs on top of their heads and all kinds of things. We're going to play this game to win instead of playing not to lose because, you know, we were the Cinderella team and, and everyone said, oh, gee, this is really great. We're going back. They were going to get kissed by their girlfriends and they're loved by their moms because we got to the final two. We were going to already had the parade all set up so we couldn't cancel that. So we might as well just go out and play. Frognak's foot, right to Dwayne McClain, and now Villanova trying to regain the lead. Raleigh wants a timeout. He wants to set strategy. Excellent move by Raleigh Massimino. Frognak's having to help out inside. Jensen puts Villanova ahead at the 235 mark. Or Georgetown can't go four corner. Wingate has lost it. And Pinckney is fouled. This the last college game for Patrick Ewing at Georgetown. The end of an era. Three times in four years he has brought him to the title game. And for Ed Pinckney, his last game. They've dueled each other for four years. Ewing. McLean rebounding inside of a minute. Through the foul, and Villanova with a chance to stage one of the greatest upsets in the history of the NCAA championship finals. That's it. Villanova has done it. And I can still see the expressions on the faces of the Villanova players after it ended, when they all went over and they were hugging one another and Raleigh Massimino was in the middle. Those youngsters realized what they had accomplished. I think they had to sit down and watch the videotape and see for themselves that they had beaten Patrick Ewing and this mighty Georgetown team. Years ago, the Final Four was different. Um, it was a 32-team field. The regionals were based on teams just from that region. And sometimes the West was not as strong, so teams from the West and the Midwest, by winning two games, could get to the Final Four. Now it takes four games against teams from all over the United States just to get to the Finals. It wasn't uh, an easy road to the championship, but we had been accustomed to playing that kind of a schedule because we had played most of the top teams in the country already. And when we got into the championship game with Duke, uh, it was... Uh, to a point where they had won 21 in a row and, and we were 15 in a row. Dawkins. Dawkins went head to head against him. Wagner other. lost the ball off his sneaker. Here comes Dawkins. Oh, was fouled. Duke puts Johnny Dawkins low. It's not often that Wagner sees a guard go low against him. And then he pops out to the top of the circle. Brilliant shot. Now this pace, Brent, will nobody be able to go the full game at this pace. Dawkins oh. again. It's a three-on-one break for Duke. <laughs> Dawkins. Great. And Thompson. Billy Thompson. Comes out with a rebound, and here's Ellison. What a great defensive play. Three-on-one stopped by Thompson. Turnaround. That's a four-point turnaround. There's Wagner misfiring, but Ellison with an aggressive move. There's a clear out for Dawkins. Good help by Hall. Jumps in, and it's stolen by Ellison, the center. Ellison, it's a one-point game. Louisville can go ahead this trip. Lob. Wagner. They do. This was the last drill that both of these teams practiced today. Oh, yeah. oh. And Dawkins gives Duke the lead. Pops 
Johnson off a nice fake. They must hurry. Ball takes the shot and misfired, but Ellison was there. It's a free throw for the national championship. Louisville will win it. The Cardinals have won the national championship. Denny Crum does it again. Four times in the last seven years to the Final Four. The game evolves. You know, the players keep getting better and the coaches get more sophisticated and the officials have to keep getting better too. The, the rules changes, I think, uh, for the most part, have helped the game progress. Uh, they, they went to the shot clock, as everyone knows, a couple years ago to keep the games from being uh, totally stalled. And now we have the three-point play. Alford's three. Douglas penetrates and gets it. The Orangemen come out. Have Trish. He wanted it. Trish. And... <laughs> Off the cut, it's smart again. Alford tied up. He wanted smart. Got it taken away by the Orange. Oh. Comes away with it. Would you believe the move? Syracuse leads. Cycle open. Garrett's pushing. They had 26 left yep. on the 45, and they went right now, and Smart comes back at the other end. Tied at 70. Thomas tried to draw the foul. Trish oh. gets it to fall, and inside of a minute, Syracuse leads. Short. He misses that one. Smart has it, dribbles it out. Smart comes up inside of Monroe, hits the two. And a quick timeout is called at the 30-second mark. A smart play by Smart. He's short. Indiana can win it. And he decided to put Douglas on offer. And they go man to man. Smart takes the shot. Oh, and the Hoosiers with three seconds. Go ahead. Nobody stopped the clock. Nobody stopped the clock. Here it goes. Indiana wins the championship. Keith Smart is the hero. <laughs> Oklahoma, a number one seed, will be wearing their home whites and the Jayhawks in their traveling blue. You might recall they broke out those red uniforms a couple of years ago in Dallas. They have stored them away forever. Loose off the tap, control Oklahoma. And they put up the first field goal, Mookie Blaylock at two. Just a few moments ago, Larry Brown addressed this team and said, don't be afraid of winning. They dumped to Manning on the jump hook, turn around, he's two for two. Brings it back out and guns the three. Here's Pritchard. And Pritchard puts the Jayhawks back ahead. The Sooners are not getting easy field goals here so far in this game. Now the three by Seager, a great outside shooter. Running through without the ball. Lob pass to Manning. Can Manning do any more? <laughs> you know, he's had a game in the first 10 minutes. Grant on that quick turnaround. Oklahoma gets a turnover, and that's number seven in the turnover department for the Jayhawks. But Pritchard goes and forces one himself, and that's five by the Sooners, so not a huge advantage. Now Newton down. Wrap around. Beautiful shot by Newton. Now on the turnover, Manning goes for the home run. No more for the layup. Oklahoma with an opportunity to go ahead, and Seager oh, hits another three. For Dave Seeger, number six. They didn't get it to him, so Newton will take a three and tie it. Steal by Manning, he'll put it down. Here we go. King loses the handle, Grace back up, and Oklahoma ties it. This youngster has an inoperable tumor, and for the last few years, he has been very close to the Jayhawks. He is a neighbor of Coach Larry Brown, and Larry has been voted the sports leader of the year by the Special Olympics. Into King. Now there he was. Ties it at 54. And then he throws in a jump hook for the lead. The next to fall would be Oklahoma if they keep it up. Right 
Piper. Normore penetrates, drops it off to Piper at the buzzer. They use the entire 45. The son of Ed Manning is now the second greatest scorer in the history of NCAA tournament play. He has put the Jayhawks up by three. 14 seconds to go. The Kansas Jayhawks have beaten all odds. They have lost more games than any champion in the history of the NCAA. If you have your neighborhood team and you pull for them, to get into that tournament, win a couple of games, and then if you get on a roll, get to the Final Four. It's the American dream to win the NCAA Basketball Championship. What makes college athletics is the uh, unquenchable spirit, if you will, of the young people that year after year come into college athletics. That's what makes it so, so exciting. It's youth, it's vigor, the unpredictability of competition of uh, 18 to 21 year old athletes. Walter uh, is really the architect of the tournament and whatever the tournament is today is to his credit. First of all, he envisioned the tournament, that it would be very appropriate to have a Division I basketball championship. Uh, secondly, he put the tournament in motion, uh, first without television, later with television, uh, engineered the, the whole thing from start to finish. It's the greatest day in college basketball, that Saturday afternoon doubleheader of four great teams, and all the excitement as the Final Four begins. The four best uh, collegiate teams in the country. Which top of the mountain? Something like a dream come true, being able to get there. It surpasses the Indianapolis Speedway, the Kentucky Derby, the World Series, the Super Bowl. You look in the dictionary, look it up, and it'll hope it'll say NCAA tournament. It's the single most exciting event in American sport. Excitement, fun, uh, enjoyment, uh, uh, memories. You see the players and you see the look in their faces, they just know that it's. Uh, uh, that they're involved in something that they will remember the rest of their lives. Like any other player on any NCAA championship team, it's a feeling that you'll never forget. We're talking memories. We're talking good memories. There's no other feeling like it. That big fat ring I wear on my finger. You know, I smile. I mean, it was. I got one. I got there, and we won it all. To win it, that's 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 heaven.